Earlier this month, it was revealed that the CIA once suspected their station chief in Islamabad had been poisoned by Pakistan's military intelligence service, the ISI. Such is the level of distrust between the US and Pakistani governments and their top spies. Now, it's not often, in fact, it's rare that you see the former heads of two countries' intelligence agencies debate sensitive issues like this. But that's exactly what we have in this week's arena. Joining me in the studio is General Michael Flynn, former director of the Defense Intelligence Agency under President Obama, who also helped run US special operations against the Taliban in Afghanistan, and is author of a new book on terrorism, The Field of Fight. And from Islamabad, General Assad Durrani, former head of the ISI and one of the main architects of Pakistan's Mujahideen policy in Afghanistan in the 1980s. Uh, gentlemen, thanks for joining me here in the arena. Uh, General Flynn, let me start with you. Has the Pakistani ISI, in your view, in your experience, been playing a so-called double game, pretending to support the US in that region, but really supporting the Taliban and its allies? So in a, in a short answer, I think the answer is yes. Uh, I, I would say that this double game, uh, really what it has to do with is the national security interests of the, uh, of, of the government of Pakistan uh, have never been aligned as clearly as they need to be with the national security interests of the United States. And I think that the double game really comes down to what I would describe as selfish self-interest of each nation. And we are going to have to figure it out how we, uh, how we develop beyond, you know, two intelligence officers talking about whether or not we're, we're uh, poisoning each other to much more diplomatic and economic relationships. Because right now, we're, we are at such a tactical level with our relationship, it's, 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 it's actually very sad. Uh, General Durrani, it's very sad. Uh, General Flynn, the former head of the DIA, says, he says you are playing a double game. Pakistani intelligence, Pakistani government has been because your interests aren't aligned with America's. The interests are not aligned with the Americans. That is where I would agree with General Flynn. The two countries are pursuing different objectives. They do not agree as to what approach is to be taken. And I think he's right. National interests determine how the intelligence agencies would, co uh, would cooperate. Once upon a time, since you mentioned about that earlier period, for a certain period, our interests were the same. The CIA's interests in Afghanistan and ours, we wanted to get the Soviets out. We trust, well, well, we worked together very well. We respected each other's terms. And the result was that it worked out so very well that the Soviets did leave. Now, the situation is not the same. We do not see eye to eye with each other, and if you have, must talk about the alliance, I think United States, and America, uh, United States of America and Pakistan were not allies in this particular phase, post 9-11 in Afghanistan. In your view, General Durrani, in places like Afghanistan, are US troops, US intelligence agents, legitimate targets for insurgents? Is that your view? No, my view is that the U.S. military presence by itself is a source of concern for many people in the region, certainly Pakistan, because the military presence means Afghanistan remains unstable. Some people will keep resisting it and fighting against that. We are neighbors. We are going to be with each other for a long, long time. Long after the United States has gone home, we have to live together. And as I said, in our case, all Afghan factions are important for us, are dear okay, to us. All, all Afghan factions are important and dear to us. General Flynn, your new book, the subtitle to your new book is How We Can Win the Global War Against Radical Islam and Its Allies. You served in Afghanistan. At the time, did you believe the ISI was acting as an ally of radical Islam, of quote unquote, uh, jihadi groups? Yeah, yes, yes. They were acting in, in, in relationship with groups that were in their interests, groups that were in the, in the Pakistanis selfish self-interest, as we act with groups in our own U.S. selfish self-interest. And, and the problem is, is that it's like, it's like a biological virus. It's like a virus that, that's like Zika. It gets out of control and you can no longer control it. What I have seen, and, and General Durrani, you know, you can agree or not, what I have seen in the last decade plus is the doubling of, of the number of groups that we now call radical Islamist groups in Pakistan alone, so the so the scale with, with tacit with, government or intelligence well, it, approval. Well, it started. It started initially. You know, when we've argued about the Haqqanis and the Taliban relationships with the ISI and others, 
TTP. Do you yeah. believe those relationships I, exist? Absolutely, I believe they General exist. General Durrani, why does Pakistan, uh, which is an ally of the US, regardless of interests not being aligned, why is it in a relationship with the Haqqani group, the Taliban, other such groups? Because the Afghan Taliban are seen by most of the people in the region as a group that is fighting foreign occupation. And that is the source of the sympathy that they have on both sides. A survey by the New York Times said the Afghan Taliban have the support and the sympathy of one third of the population in Afghanistan. That's a good number. You can call the groups that do not like as radical militants and so on and so forth. I am not in the business of calling names. As I said, the regional powers will be foolish not to take them into consideration, okay, not to think about as to what will happen if they, we also go and target okay. them. Just sticking on Pakistan, though, you say that it's time for, to go our separate ways, our interests yeah. aren't aligned. Yeah. Then will you be giving back the $18 billion or so in military aid that the US has given to Pakistan? Isn't it hypocritical to say, we're not aligned with you, but we'll take your money? You see, I can think of so many reasons why the United States will continue to give that money or why some people in Pakistan will take that money because of the damage to the infrastructure, because of the damage to the economy. But one thing this money will not achieve, and that money will not force a country like Pakistan to change its national interest, to change its approach to certain problem resolution, will not sell its uh, national policy. General Flynn? So, I mean, and I have enormous respect for General Durrani for his years of service to the world, as much as to his years of service to Pakistan. Uh, he said he's not in the business of calling names. I'm in the business of defining threats, defining, clearly defining the threats that we face. We do have uh, some commonalities. We do have some similarities in the threats that we face. And we are looking at uh, some real serious issues if we allow the, the situation in Afghanistan to continue to go in the direction that it's in, and, and frankly, Pakistan has been playing a very funny game, you know, and you, got to, you have to decide whose side are you on at, you know, at the end of the day. And I, I just think that Pakistan has had a tough time deciding whose side they're on. General Durrani. Yeah. You see, uh, double game has been talked about so many times, and I'm just tempted to repeat whatever one has been saying so often. The countries do not play single games. They have to keep so many balls in the air. But I think General Flynn is right about defining the threat. So what is the threat that we define in Afghanistan? It's the instability. What about the threat in Pakistan? You have, you have the TTP, the Pakistani Taliban. You now have ISIL. I'm so glad this question is being asked about TP, T TTP. TTP emerged when Pakistan very foolishly started taking military action in its own tribal area because of either the pressure or because of the bidding of the United States. TP, TTP is the product of the war next door that started after 9-11. The TTP, the Pakistani Taliban, General Flynn, says General Durrani is all the fault of the U.S. occupation next door. Yeah, it's not. It's not. He, he knows this. I mean, I, again, I mean, the, the problems, you know, reside and exist right inside of Pakistan. I'm, I'm more concerned about Pakistan collapsing than I am about Afghanistan. Pakistan collapses. We have a significant problem, and there are about five times as many people in Pakistan. General Durrani? It's very heartwarming when people are concerned about Pakistan and its future. The problem is that when they are ask us to go and target such groups like the Haqqanis who do not act against Pakistan, then they are asking us to create even more enemies. There are enough number of threats that Pakistan faces, western border, eastern border, and within. We have no intentions of increasing the number of enemies. There's a lot of Afghans, I'm sure, who'd be watching this, who might say a plague on both your houses. Yeah. U.S. intelligence and Pakistani intelligence uh, sponsored, both sponsored a lot of nasty, unsavory groups in that country over the years, foreign fighters included, that have wrecked ordinary Afghan people's lives. What would you say to them? Well, I mean, I, personally, I would say that uh, what we have to do, continue to do for that entire region is we have to reinstill confidence that we actually can help them. I mean, you know, just in a very generic, very strategic way, we have to, we cannot leave this region 
to the likes of these these multiple terrorist organizations. Some of which you sponsored in the past. Do you and, accept and, that? And I think we have we have been enabling them collectively. The two of us here in in our own you know yeah. in our own worlds, uh, they they have been enabled to a degree. And and I think that we have to tell the people of the region, not just Afghanistan, that we are not going to back out of there and and just suddenly pull the plug because there's too much at stake. Gentlemen, thank you for your uh, time. We'll have to leave it there. Uh, thanks both for joining me in the arena. Um, that's our show. Upfront, we'll be back next week.